before Christmas, my boyfriend got me a bread maker, and since then, I've been baking to sourdough like crazy. So many of you have asked for me to show a video on how I make my sourdough loaf. So in this video, I'll be showing you how I make my sourdough loaves. I find this is an easy way to make high quality bread and it is something I've really enjoyed doing. So without further ado, let's get started. Here is an overview of the equipment that you'll need. You don't necessarily need a bread maker or a stand mixer, but I do recommend if you have one, use it because sourdough has a high hydration level, so it's a little hard to work with. Um, in addition, you don't necessarily need the cast iron pan as well. You can just use a regular baking sheet. Sourdough only requires four basic ingredients, and the recipe that we'll be using will be based off of Paul Hollywood's recipe that he published in his book, Bake. And I recommend looking online for instructions on how to make a sourdough starter. Let's dive right in. So to start out, I just first bring up my bread machine, plug it in, and I bring out my food scale. It is important that your measurements are accurate with this recipe. So you're gonna start out, you're gonna first take 450 grams of bread flour, 10 grams of salt, 320 grams of lukewarm water, and then 150 grams of the sourdough starter. So once you've added in all your ingredients, you're gonna place it in your bread maker or stand mixer. And what I do here is I knead it for about 20 to 30 minutes and I put it on the dough setting of my bread maker. So while my bread is kneading, I use this time to feed my sourdough starter. So I do equal parts bread flour to water. And during this time as well, I'll take my bowl that I'm gonna let my bread rest in. And I take some paper towel and olive oil, and then I just coat the edges with it. And this helps make sure the loaf doesn't stick to the bowl as it rises. So after 25 minutes of kneading, my dough is ready for this first proofing phase. So I recommend getting your hand wet and then you just take your dough, place it in the bowl that you are going to proof it in. And then from there, you want to make sure you tightly secure some saran wrap over it. You don't want any air getting into this. And then I just place a tea towel over it and then it is good to go to rest overnight. Based on Paul's recipe, he recommends his first proof be between 9 to 10 hours, but what I've been doing is that it ranges between 12 and 20 hours just based on when I'm able to bake it. And I find that makes it tangier, but I would recommend if you're doing more than 20 hours, you place it in the fridge. Starting after my loaf has gone through its first proof, I then roll it out onto a floured surface. I just had this baking mat, which makes it easier to just kind of clean up. And so I just try to get it into this circle or like a small circular loaf. And if you don't have a proofing basket, that's okay. You can just let it rest um, in that shape that you form it to. But I do have this proofing basket that I just flour. And I flour the top of the bread too. I find it makes it easier so that the bread doesn't stick. And for this second proof, you want it to rest for approximately one to two hours. I go towards the two hour end. Um, I find that gets the best rise in the loaf. So when the two hours is up, I will preheat my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and I'll set up how I want to kind of cook it. So I put one rack on the middle and then one rack on the bottom. So on the middle rack, you're going to put your cast iron skillet or you can just use a regular pan. And then I use another baking pan as well that goes on the bottom. And so you can see here, that's just how I have it arranged for my oven. And in the meantime, when it gets close to preheating, I'll put on the kettle and so while that's going, I will dust some flour and parchment paper, bring out my loaf, and then do a quick little design with my scoring knife. And so once the water is heated, I'll then take the bottom rack and you're going to want to put that boiling water into that bottom baking sheet and this helps create steam. And the steam is essential to get that crust that sourdough is known for. Uh, so once I get that all done, I'll put my loaf on my baking pan or your cast iron and I let it bake for a total of 40 minutes and I will rotate the loaf halfway through. So after that 40 minutes are done, I'll take my loaf out of the oven and a good way to make sure if your bread is cooked is you tap it and if it sounds hollow, that means it's cooked all the way through. You should have a nice crust. If you can hear the sounds, it sounds amazing. And yeah, that's how you make this super easy sourdough. It's so tangy, it's tasty, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.